expecting some sort of whipsaw because of the news that came out today. All right, so we're officially live on YouTube and we're officially streaming. Happy Thursday, everybody. This is Roy Dunia, co-founder, CEO of Chart Addicts. I'm going to have my camera up here in a second. Um, had to fix some things in the room. Going to mute that real quick. It's great to have you guys back here. The purpose of these streams is to show you guys how I look at markets in real time, potentially give you guys some trade setups that you could follow along on your own and uh, provide some education, some clarity on what's happening in the markets. If you guys have any questions, make sure to put them in the chat boxes. I'll go through them. And if there's any pairs, instruments, or trades that you guys would like me to go over, please let me know. Again, my name is Roy Dunia. I'm the co-founder of CEO of Chart Addicts. We can be found at chartaddictsfx.com. If you guys are interested in finding us online, it's chartaddictsfx.com. And this stream is brought to you guys by Enigma FX. Enigma FX is a Forex signals app. Great thing about this app is it has a 30 day free trial and an incredible win rate. Past profits don't equal future results. Go check them out for yourself. EnigmaFX.app, 30 day free trial. Waiting for you. All right, back to the charts. So let's go through the two main trades that I'm looking at. One is this GJ long position that I'm still in. Sort of, uh, it's not looking too good. I'll be completely honest. There's a lot of room for it to cover to the downside before we continue. We could potentially see this double bottom down here before we continue to the upside. So that's a possibility. I'm not naive about that. However, I did catch a trade yesterday at 161.1, and I'm holding that position, looking to see if we get a continuation. Going to be honest, I also entered a re-entry off this wick rejection. So I'm a little bit invested in this entry as well. Um, just 161.4 re-entries. I'm in this GJ trade, really looking to take this thing long. And this is going to be like a multiple week swing trade. All right. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. Got to be patient. Whenever we enter a trade, our job is done. Our job is to handle the execution. It's the market's job to move. We don't get to choose when it moves, how fast it moves. We don't get to choose in how many candles it moves. All we decide is where we enter and how much our risk is. So as long as we've done our part, now it's time for the market to take GJ to the moon or to you know disrespect that uh, bias. Um, on the daily, I see it's at a 38.2 retracement level to go long. Yeah, it's at a major, major, major like support turned resistance zone. So it could go bullish. And because of the news, I'm honestly expecting some sort of a spike. Like, uh, let's go to the basics here. We just kind of remove all the noise real quick. Where are we at? So obviously, previous area of daily support, daily resistance daily support, daily support. So here's how trading works, people. This is very, very, very straightforward. We had a minor rejection at the zone. Now we all know that minor rejections don't mean anything. This could be a minor retest before we continue to the downside. We have this nice head and shoulders forming here. And I think that we have a lot of potential to break to the downside. These previous candles have broken through a lot of structural levels. And we've broken above all of these previous lows and ended up at the beginning of this trend. So we could have a potential to close below or make a double bottom and keep pushing to the upside. So if the market goes to break below, gets over here and then can't seem to break, starts to create higher lows, then the next move is to the upside. Maybe not to the top of the range, probably closer to one of these levels. All right. So those are the only two things I'm seeing on NAS. We're either going to get a break through the zone or it's going to come back down to retest and continue bullish. So short-term sells, long-term, we'll see. We don't try to predict, we react. So this is a trade idea I had yesterday. I was in deep profits. I took some partials. I moved my stop loss to break even. I got smacked last night. 
Then we had a pretty aggressive closure on the upside on the 30 minute. And now we're forming a little bit of like a flag retracement here. We got a flag retracement at this uh, potential sell zone. So this potential sell zone, if you guys look left, I basically took those wicks. I drew out a zone all the way to the right. I had this previous area where the market made a pit stop on the way back down. These are areas of interest whenever we look to take trades. So right at the market open, we're looking at two scenarios here. Retest of the sell zone and drop. Or it's going to completely break through, come back in for a retest, and then continue. So basically, if we close above these previous highs and we show a clean break of structure, then we can just wait for a deep pullback and enter. If the market gets up to this potential sell zone, starts to make its way through the zone, and then closes back under, then we can look for some kind of retest and short to the downside. So overall structure, pretty straightforward. I still see longs. Guys, like we had negative GDP this morning. So everybody who thinks they're a genius is like, okay, well, negative GDP, that means that the stock market's going to crash. And so a lot of people are probably loading up shorts here just for the sake of trading with that news. Uh, the thing is the government told us that they don't really follow that negative GDP thing anymore. And they have their own metrics for what they're looking for to signify a recession. So it doesn't even matter if the GDP is negative. We, as market analysts and as smart people, we know that this shit is not good for the economy. If the economy is shrinking for six months in a row, at some point, you got to be like, okay, this is not a fluke. A couple months of negative GDP, you're like, okay, you know, we got out the pandemic. They stopped printing the money. We're getting our foot back in the door. Okay, I get it. It's summer, Roy. It's summer. But then when you start to look at six months in a row of negative growth in the economy, you're going to be like, okay, something's pretty fucked up here. And so, uh, yeah, we're definitely in a recession, but because the, the government and because the Federal Reserve is not acknowledging that recession, I don't think it's going to affect the stock market the way that people think it will. So that's my breakdown of NASDAQ. Um, pretty messy day to trade today. Unless something is really, really clear, I'll be honest, I'm not expecting to take a trade on today's stream. Let me just say this up front so you, know, you guys aren't sitting here for an hour um, waiting for something. Most likely, I will not be entering a trade today. All right? High impact news day. I'm just, I love markets, people. And I really just want to see how news affects markets so I can learn about the psychology of the people that move markets. Institutions the largest 10 institutions that move price, they all have a certain framework that they're using to push the price. And every time something happens, retail is going to react a certain way. And institutions basically cook up a plan to take money from retail based on what they think retail will do. So it's our job to figure out how these institutions think and how they react to certain news events. So in the future, we can take advantage of basically that price manipulation. I'm calling buys because I just feel like most retail is going to be looking for sells. This is before. Most retail is going to be looking for sells just off of the news. And that's why they'll probably make it look like it's going to short and then push up during this session. Now that's a complete guess. We're going to have to see how the market opens. And this is why we react rather than predict. But based on all the time I've been spending looking at news and how I believe retail will react and how institutions try to take advantage of retail traders, I believe that we're going to see a spike through. All right. So unless something is very clear, don't go rushing into trades at the open. There's plenty of time there to catch entries. I'll let everybody know if I close GJ. Basically, we have this impulsive move here. We got the 61 and the 78 right at this trend line, right at the previous zone. So right now, price is retracing. If it breaks the 161.2 level, then I'll close my trade. If it closes back above, I'm going to hold this thing, and I really want to swing trade GJ to the upside. It's a massive, massive move. We got to give this thing some patience. All right. So where's the dollar sitting right now? Dollar been pumping. 
This is very standard. You have impulsive moves to the upside, pullbacks, impulsive move to the upside, pullback. And then now we're in the next impulsive move to the upside. Price broke above this previous area of structure and is now testing a new area of support. So I believe the next move for the dollar is further upside, or it could play around here for one more candle before we get that push. But basically, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't trade the dollar, but this would be option one. Basically, just respect this area of support, keep creating a higher floor, keep creating a higher floor, and then eventually keep pushing, or it makes a deeper retracement to the downside, and then it continues. Either way, the trajectory of the dollar is bullish, which means GU, bearish, EU, bearish, NZD, USD, bearish. Cool. Let's see what else is cooking here in the markets. Um, we have Euro USD right now, kind of in a slight pullback. Looks like there's a massive rejection to the upside. Um, if we close below this, this area, if we close below these wicks, then we can just wait for a pullback of the 0.995 and short it. I think that it has a little bit more room to go to the upside before we, uh, before we fully drop. And here's the best example. Market drops, we hit the floor, we make a shallow retracement, and then we continue to the downside. Over here, we hit a floor, we're retracing, but I think we can make a little bit of a deeper retracement before we fall to the downside. Let's see though, this daily closure is very important for EU. I hate US 30 with a passion sometimes. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> I saw this, uh, this, area of, this area of consolidation. We had this nice bearish push off of the zone. I was in a short off of the 78. All right, I was in profits. I didn't pull any partials. I was looking to hold the thing all the way down. Goes up and hits my stop loss and then comes all the way back down this morning. So a little, little bit annoyed here. Let's get rid of that fib because now we have a new range. Put that off to the side. Higher time frame. Yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we had a bearish engulfing here off of this area of rejection. I mean, off of this resistance zone, bearish reject or bearish engulfing. So now really all we have to do is scale down and then see if we can get a pullback. In all honesty, we probably won't get a pullback. But anything can happen at the market open. So here's the most recent push from London session or from pre-London. Line up this previous area of rejection here. Pull back at the market open and short. Nice 2.7 to 1 R&R. &R. Let me clean this shit up. So pull back at the market open and then drop to the downside. Pretty straightforward move. He says, wow, I'm in a GJ short to 161.12. Yeah, I mean, that's the zone for me. If it breaks that zone, Corey, then uh, I'm going to get out of my buys. But it could break through the zone and then wick right back above. So that's something I'm perfectly okay with. Good morning. Good morning. Do you think NAS will close Sunday's gap? I'll take a look at that in a second. Emilio is asking XAU. So let me go through XAU real quick, show you guys what we're looking at. Uh, I don't trade gold, but uh, I can sauce up any market. What the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> I told y'all. 
I haven't looked at gold in a while, but this is what I had marked up basically. It's kind of a flag retracement here. Um, let's get rid of this thing. Let's get rid of. So we had this bearish push to the downside. We had a retracement to the 61.8. And now we're sort of like, you know, we're kind of rebounding here. But I think all it's doing is it's going to pull up for one more retest and then short. So you can kind of think about it playing inside of this range here. That's all it is. All trading is is lows and highs. What we teach at Chart Addicts, just lows and highs and keeping it simple. Institutional market theory, Elliott wave theory, Wyckoff, schematics, all of this stuff is interesting and it's cool. But the majority of the stuff that's going to make you money is keeping shit simple and it's looking at highs and lows. So right now, the momentum is what? It's been bearish as far as I can tell. Let's look at since April and March, massive bearish swing, shallow retest, massive bearish swing, 61 retest. I think the next move down is another bearish swing. I don't think the dollar is ready or I don't think that gold is ready to push up just yet. Obviously, I could be wrong. We're at a massive area of daily support. We managed to hit this lower level. This uh, 1680 bounced and then retested. The last time we had that, we sort of had like a bounce and retest. 78 pulled down. And then if it wants to continue, it'll continue from there. So I think the most immediate move now is a push up to Yeah, I guess it's kind of a sketchy trade. Doesn't even hit one to two risk and reward. I was thinking we're going to get a push up, a pull down. If the market's bullish, it'll just create a new floor here and then keep going. If it's bearish, then it'll break through from the 1745. So either way, 1787, 1790, this whole area, this like 30 pip zone right here, this would be a good area for shorts. Uh, once the market gets up here. So why not take longs if we think the market's going to end up there? Let me show you guys a cool trick about risk and reward. So if we entered at the very bottom, which would have been the best move, obviously. Break, retest of that daily zone. Okay, pretty crucial. We could have put our stop loss below this. Uh, this area right here. This is where the trend basically started. We had a push, a retest. That's our new floor. Then we had another push. So that's our new low. Stop loss below that low. TP at the high. That's an almost three to one trade. All right. So that that trade would make sense. If we enter now, your risk and reward is 0. 0.6 to one. So for every dollar you're risking, you're only going to make back 60 cents, which is kind of a stupid proposition. You always want to make back more than what you're risking. All right, that's rule number one of trading. Trading is a probabilities game, and trading is a game of risk and reward. You don't have to be that smart, and you really don't have to be that good, and you really don't have to guess that much if you have good risk and reward trades. So let me give you an example. You tell yourself, I'm only going to take 10 trades this month, and each trade is a 1 to 10 risk and reward. We call these Hail Marys. Okay, one to 10 is not common. They do show up every once in a while and they do set up pretty nicely. When the market gets back up to these highs, for example, there's a very low risk above it, but there's a pretty nice TP to the downside. And that could be a, like a nice seven to one trade or an eight to one trade. So the high risk and reward trades do show up, but they're not common. If you tell yourself you're going to take, take, you're going to take 10 trades, you're going to risk $100 on each trade to make 1000 Dude, if you lost the first eight trades, you'd be down negative $800. All you have to do is win one trade and you're back in profits. You win the next trade and now you made 2000. Net, net, it'll be uh, 1200 bucks. 
So the whole point is, if you literally lost eight out of 10 trades, all right, eight out of 10 trades, like that, fucking horrible. But you had a one to 10 risk and reward, you could still make $2,000 or $1,200, risking only $100 per trade. That is the beauty of risk and reward. Now, obviously, your, fucking, your strategy should have more than a 20% win rate if you guys actually hope to be successful in this game. So assuming you have like a 50% win rate or an 80% win rate, now you're in a whole different league. So risk and reward is the whole name of the game. Don't go chasing trades. Don't go chasing entries just because you think it's going to go somewhere. Instead, try to find the best quality positions and look for pullbacks in order to get a better risk and reward on your entries. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two minutes until the market open. My advice to you is trading the market open involves an incredible amount of risk and uncertainty. I personally don't like trading the market open. If I like to, if I trade indices and specifically NASDAQ, which is the pair that I focus on, I like to wait until at least 45 minutes to an hour after the market open to start entering orders. All right. So this is going to be a patience game. Right now it's 9.30 Eastern time. Again, my name is Roy Junior. I'm the co-founder, CEO, Chart Addicts. The number one personal coaching service and education service in the world for traders. We're walking you guys through the stream. We're going to be on here for basically an hour and a half, probably another hour or an hour and a half. So buckle in, ask good questions. If you guys have any, we can talk about crypto, the economy, macroeconomics. We can talk about GDP. We can talk about the Fed. And then we can go through any pairs. If I don't see a specific trade set up, I will not be taking any trades. That's my strategy. So, uh, that's what you guys can expect for the next hour to hour and a half. If there's any questions, load them up in the chats. Let's go ahead and start knocking out some of these questions and uh, let's keep the show on the road. Can we take a look at BTC? Yeah, for sure. GJ longs to 163.25. I'm still in those longs. All right. I'm still in those longs. I don't care. It's retracing right now. I'll enter more at that 161.1 level. Just it is what it is. It's a swing trade, people. It's a swing trade. All right. So market open. We'll come back and see how it is. Before you guys put it in the chats, I know you guys are going to be like, oh my God, NASDAQ pumped. Oh my God, NASDAQ crashed. People, the market usually moves about 100 to 200 pips or points at the market open. It can go 200 points to the downside like this. It can go 200 points to the upside like this. All right, I get it. Um, I'm not trading the market open. So it's really just a game of letting it play out. We'll come back and take the trade. Our job is not to be first in the market. Our job is to allow the institutions to move price is to allow a bunch of retail traders to lose money and then to jump in after. Once all these people lost money and they're in the group chats, oh, I got spiked, I got this, I got that. Then we go in there, pretty clear trade once we have a sense of direction. Ain't that crazy? Can we look at Bitcoin? All right, BTC. This is a chart I borrowed from um, our Bitcoin analyst, Anthony Hewless. Shout out to Anthony. You guys, if you see this later, Anthony, goat level stuff. Trending, 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 higher, trending, higher, massive retest, double bottom. The market could either push up to this level and put and, uh, you know, just completely break the 22,800, or it can make one more spike up and then start crashing again. If I have to be completely honest, I think that Bitcoin has one more leg to the downside and potentially lower. If we look at the weekly time frame, We could go as high as 38 in this, uh, in this rally, but then I still think that we have a prolonged bear market coming because of the economic conditions that we are faced with. And then at some point, we will break new highs. So during this entire period, I will personally be buying up in my portfolio. And what I actually want to do, this is kind of, I'm in the middle of a move right now. We're making new courses. We're, we're sort of working on a bunch of stuff. And so I don't want to take on too many projects at once, especially with you know, sort of the FX summit prep and everything else that's going on. However, I do want to do something special on YouTube, which is show you guys the bear market investment account. 
basically I want to start with a thousand bucks and I want to keep loading it up. Like I'll take trading money whenever I make a withdrawal and I'll just fund up the account. And I want to show you guys how that account looks at the end of the bear market. All right. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, you don't have to have a lot of money in crypto to make returns. And I think it's the beauty of this decentralized space. It's the beauty of this, um, the kind of like the democratization of finance is the ability for everyone to take advantage and the ability for you to leverage small amounts of capital uh, in certain quality projects to yield you a return over time. Now, obviously do your own research. Nothing is guaranteed in the markets and there's always a risk. However, staying on the sidelines has a guarantee. The only guaranteed result in investing is from sitting on the sidelines. You're not going to make any money. You're not going to lose any money. That's the only guarantee in investing. But being involved in the game, there's a few risks, there's a few rewards, and uh, the upside is, you know, it's a lot sweeter than the risk. So I'll show you guys that account, show you guys what I'm investing in, and I think it'll be really, really cool. UJ breakdown, this shit's going to keep going. What do you expect in the coming days for Jackson Hole? Um, the reason that I look at the data myself and the reason like you guys can see what I was doing this morning, I'm on the Bureau of Economic, Re uh, this is not even the Re Bureau of Economic Research. What is this? This is a Bureau of Economic Activity. Uh, basically, this is one of the key measures that the uh, Treasury uses for their GDP calculations. And I was just looking at the GDP quarter over quarter. You guys can see whenever the GDP is negative for two quarters in a row, we go into a recession. When these orange bars are above the line, we're pretty good. Q3, this is when we printed a bunch of money. We had the fastest growth of all time, huge growth, huge growth. And then now we're sort of coming down. The Q2, not too bad. Like it's not, it's not horrible. It's not full recession, but it's still two consecutive quarters of negative growth, which is not that good for the economy. And so uh, I look at these metrics myself because this is what the Fed is going to use to end up making their decision. What I think they're going to talk about is inflation is still high, uh, labor is good, and GDP is weak. And with all those factors, they're going to continue to tighten, and we should expect a 75 basis point move in the September 21st Fed meeting. All right. And so more rate hikes to come. I know, I know like a lot of people were thinking that the Fed was going to start to slow down. And they were only going to do a 50 basis point hike in September. I think that we should expect a 75 basis point hike. And I think that that's what they're going to kind of hint at at Jackson Hole. What is the Jackson Hole Symposium about? It's the first time I'm observing it on the for on Forex Factory. It's an annual meeting where they talk about monetary policy. Um, the history of it, like I'm not a historian. I'll be completely honest, guys. And most of the time, I just really don't care. It's probably very sketchy how it started. It's like a secret group of people met in Jackson Hole. Um, I think it's in Utah, if I'm not mistaken, right? Where is it? Okay. Shout out to Investopedia. Oh, so it's in Kansas City. Oh, no, sorry. Wyoming. Fuck. All right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So it was, a, it was in 1981. What was happening around that time in economics? Uh, basically, we were going into a recession. We had a massive inflation crisis. We had just come out of a huge recession in the 70s. And they probably got together to discuss how we're going to save the world and how we're going to, you know, get the dollar standard to be very strong. The Federal Reserve, like the dollar only took global dominance in 71 when we got off the gold standard. So they probably just got together, talked about how the world, how, how the dollar is going to take over the world. Very sketchy place to do it at in Wyoming. And uh, it just kind of held. And now they just kind of do it for historical reasons. But it don't really matter. Like policy, guys, policy drives everything. If you're a major institution and you're handling billions or trillions of dollars of people's money, you don't really care what like five people in a, in a room are saying at a symposium. What you really want to see is what got signed into law. When they raise the interest rates, when that bank goes to borrow money, they're literally going to have to pay billions and billions and billions of dollars in interest that they didn't have to pay before. That's a real impact. So people make decisions off of real impact. 
Um, buy the rumor, sell the news. Have you guys ever heard that? It's stuff like that. So unless it's unless there's legislation or something written written into law or something legitimate, it's just all rumor. Is it I'm in my I'm in Wyoming? Oh, shout out to Wyoming, I guess. What is it? It's in Wyoming. Oh, true, true, true. Uh Board Ape Solana Club. Love Board Ape Solana Club. We have a partnership with them. If you guys don't know, if you own one of the gold NFTs on Board Ape Solana, God, let me just show you guys what this is. Guys, we're doing all kinds of education. If you guys turned on Bloomberg this morning, you may get some of the same headline news, but you're not going to get anything else. You're not going to get the trades. You're not going to get the crypto news or any of the psychology tips that I'm going to give you for trading or any of the patients or any of like the demonstrations of how to trade or none of that. So I hope that you guys are enjoying the stream for real. If you guys are on YouTube, click like and hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the stream so far. But I'm going to walk you guys through how to analyze a project and how to go through and look at certain projects if this is your first time ever doing it. Now, I'm going to do this on OpenSea. There's another platform for Solana NFTs, Magic Eden. This is mostly for Ethereum NFTs. But I'll show you guys what we're talking about. So here's the Board Ape Solana Club. Um, the floor price right now is 13 and a half. Oh, that's kind of... ooh. It's kind of attractive. 13 and a half is pretty good. There's 2.2 thousand unique owners. So that's a pretty big community. And there's 6,000 6, total items in this uh, community. So whenever you're looking at an NFT project, these are the main things that you're supposed to be looking at. You want to look at the amount of items that they have in circulation and the amount of unique owners that they have. The more unique holders that a certain project has, the more that you can tell it has clout. People care about it. It's not just like, a weak ass project, two guys started a thing. It's got a legitimate, legitimate following. You know, it's got a legitimate um, base of, of holders. Total volume, are people buying and selling or is this shit just sitting dead? So a lot of volume, you can go through, look at all the different metrics, sales listed, high and low. Um, let's go to the items real quick. And we'll go low to high. We'll go to the cheapest one. So the cheapest ape right now is 13.5. I'm actually going to buy it right after the stream. Show you guys how to go through and buy some NFTs, put it on the, put it on YouTube. But 13 and a half is a pretty good price if the other ones are selling for 14. You feel what I'm saying? You can buy this one for 13 and a half and just relist it for 15 and make a quick one and a half sold. So just, you know, there's certain little things that you can do in these markets. You know, we could talk about those in the future. We can have a whole call just on that. The discount on which package you are getting when you own one of the apes, boy. So if you own one of the gold apes, if you have like a gold coin, a uh, gold fur, if you have a gold, 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 you get a free membership to Chart Addicts as long as you hold that eight. So a free membership to Chart Addicts gets you access to all these streams. But I really think this thing's going to push up. But we have to wait. Patience is a virtue. Um, yeah, so uh, if you have any of the gold fur, you get free access to Chart Addicts, which means you get access to personal coaching. You get access to these streams. You get access to the courses that we have on the website for, you know, to become a profitable trader. There are tons of stuff. So there's a lot of perks. If you own a board ape in general, you get 25% off any of our services. I just absolutely love the community. And like, yes, the project is cool. Guys, like, don't think that I'm just out here buying monkey pictures. This is really just not a, it's not about the art for me as much as it is about, I mean, don't get me wrong. First off, I fuck with the art. We're making a whole sort of uh, animated series for one of our <laughs> for one of our characters it's going to be a big deal but i'm really just betting on the team you know austin collins dak days he's a really good friend of chart addicts he spoke at the fx summit gives us a lot of help he's helping us on the chart addicts nft project i'm betting on him you know the guy the guy is a, has high integrity the guy is an incredibly hard worker very smart in the way that he has like ideas and how to push the project forward and cool things to do the project itself has so many perks. So if you have a cowboy hat, for example, they'll pay for your gas on Tuesdays. If you have a, a pizza in your mouth on the ape, they'll pay for your pizza on Mondays. So like that's crazy real world perks. When gas was fucking $5 a gallon, people couldn't afford to go to work. Just by owning one of these NFTs, they were paying for your gas. Like this shit was real. All this other fucking, all these other random projects and like NFTs and pictures and shit. I'm like, if I can't get something real world from this, why the fuck would I want it? No, I'm not paying $225,000 for virtual real estate when it doesn't actually get me 
a deed to a house or access to a physical location or something. Doesn't really make sense. So real world application and utility, biggest, biggest thing for NFTs. Keep that in mind. If you're watching this stream again, this stream is sponsored by Enigma FX, the number one Forex signals app in the world. 30 day free trial. If you guys are watching this stream, just head over to enigmafx.app, enigmafx.app. Performance results are posted on the website. Um, basically, we've called about 16 trades since we launched the app. We're running four or 13 winners out of 16. So a little bit over 80% win rate. Past profits don't equal future success. However, um, that app is crushing it so far. So easy to use, easy to understand. 30-day free trial, enigmafx.app. Go grab it now. We have NAS100. 100 top tech stocks in the US economy. We're looking at the market open right now. We're about 15 minutes out from the market open. Going to give it another 15 to 30 minutes before we start uh, taking trades in the direction of the trend. The way I see things playing out now is longs to the upside, but we have to wait. Guessing can get you burned. So uh, a little bit of patience. It's all we need. Nick says he's in Nas longs now. Doobie said he took longs on U30. What's U30 doing? By the way, to whoever was asking for UJ, same thing as the dollar. This thing is pumping up. It's a swing trade, obviously. And this thing is following crazy structure, guys. 139 final TP. 138.5 next TP. Clear, 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 higher lows forming. Break, retest, double bottom, push to the upside. One more pullback, 61 would be an entry. Swing trade up. Stop loss below swing low. Money bags. All right. U30, though. What are we doing? Can we get a retest, please? Personally, I was waiting for a pullback on U30. Want to see this head and shoulders finish forming. And we might still get that pullback. We'll have to see. The market breaking below this uh, below this structure is not a bad thing. Doesn't doesn't necessarily indicate that it's going to go long. What it indicates is that bears have all the momentum, and all we have to do is wait for a pullback. Now, is it going to go all the way up here? Probably not. If we keep closing bearish, then we can wait for a short term pullback, thirty two nine fifty five. But I'll be honest, this aggressive movement, this aggressive movement. Um, I think that even if you guys do get that buy position, which is going to whipsaw up, it'll be a quick move. So it'll be a fast trade. I would take profits up here because this is kind of where I think the market will turn back around. Oil prices coming back up. It'll probably keep pushing per barrel 107. And then uh, gas prices will come, will go back up. I know you guys have noticed gas prices come down 380, 360, 350. It's been a good time, but uh, I think they're going to go back into the fours and four and a halfs pretty soon. And then we'll start to slowly come back down later. NASDAQ looks better for longs than uh, U30 does. I'll be real. But I'm not a breakout trader. I'll wait for some sort of uh, some sort of flip to the upside and then a pullback. Like I said at the beginning of the stream, most likely not taking a trade today unless something st stands out. So I want to set those expectations early on this stream to make sure that you guys uh, know kind of what to expect on this call. You should look into uh, Meta Bounty Hunters and Meta Labs Agency NFTs. They pay out monthly reflections and a lot more tied with the utility. The thing about anything that's providing um, like any sort of monthly payments, it's very hard for them to stay solvent. So you guys saw Celsius crash. You guys saw Luna crash. These guys were like tens of billions of dollars deep. Um, whenever you're like running a Ponzi scheme where basically like new people on the platform are paying the old people on the platform and they're giving you a, like a high percentage, 
I want to see serious staking platforms come up. All right. But also I want to get my hands on an ape. I'll be honest. I got like fucking 20 of these at this point. And we have a custom, custom, custom ape that they made for us with the chart addicts, um, with the chart addicts hoodie on. Hold up. I got to find this shit. You guys, I know you guys have seen Benji, the board ape. I, my shit's not even listed. I'll be honest. It's unlisted, but uh, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to see if I can use the number to find it. I think if I haven't listed it, then it might not show up. You're the only one with that type of hoodie. You just look it up by the clothing. It doesn't show up. It doesn't show up because I don't think I've listed it or even the unlisted ones are showing up. Let me just get into my phantom wallet. Really got to go to rarity rank. It's two of two. Oh, my guy. Thank you, sir. There he is. So that's Benji, the board ape. He's got the chart addicts hoodie custom. He's got the board ape hat. He's got the sunglasses, unique features. One of one. With the gold fur crushing it. That's the official mascot for uh, chart addicts. Let's go. All right. Sorry. My bad, y'all. <clears throat> I have to get my composure. That thing got so close to my stop loss, people. All right. All right. All right. All right. Come on, GJ. Take us home, baby. Take us home. Guys, I'm not a swing trader. And I'll be completely honest, going from scalping to swing trading, not that much fun. However, let me give you guys my, uh, let me show you guys my sort of kind of like my uh, pros and cons of each. So the pros of swing trading is honestly, there's no work involved. Like I'm just knee deep in this fucking trade. I'm holding this thing and I'm in profits and I'm trying my best not to close the profits because I see big numbers. That's basically it. The whole game is, can I stay in this thing until stop loss or take profit? And if I can hold it long enough, I'm going to get that massive pop that jumps up 200, 300, 400 pips and uh, ride this thing into the sunset. <laughs> So that's kind of what I'm what I'm looking for on Nasdaq or on GJ. So the pros a little bit less work. Now the pros of uh, day trading and and sort of scalping on Nasdaq is I could take a trade and by 11 a.m. I'll be 100% done with markets. I don't want to look at a chart. I don't want to look at Nas. Whatever it's doing, whatever. I just need one good candle, 
and I'm out for the day. So they each have their pros and cons. All right, so swing low to swing high, quick fib. We smashed through the 88.6, kind of closing above it now. If there's a long position, it'll probably be from here. Probably to like 1330. All right, I'm personally not going to take this trade, but uh, if there is a specific... If there's a specific trade right now that I'm looking at, this thing will probably pump back up, head up to one of these levels. And then if it's bearish, it'll create a lower high or it'll wick, close below this high, and then come back down. Personally, not taking this trade, but uh, just sort of paper trading this and analyzing the market movement. Big news day, people. I ain't looking to force no trades today. FX Summit 2022 was life-changing. I can't wait for Summit 23. Guys, we're, gonna, we're putting so much work into 23. It's going to make 22 look like child's play. I'm letting you guys know right now, we're bringing the serious fucking heat this year. We're trying to get the big names, FTX, Coinbase, and all the folks. We're trying to get the biggest names in Forex, right? We're trying to get the biggest names in institutional trading. Yes, I'm fucking shooting for the moon, right? If we can get Mark Cuban, if we can get fucking... Um, I want Sam Bankman. Mr. Wonderful. FTX. Mr. Wonderful. Uh, not really. That guy's a fucking, that guy's a fucking scammer. I don't say he's a scammer, but like, you don't just show up into Bitcoin like two years ago and just claim to like know anything about the, in you know what I'm saying? Like I I've been in the industry since 2014. All right. I know more about crypto than Kevin O'Leary does. Now, does he have a lot more fucking money than I do? Yes. Can he buy a lot more crypto than me? Without a fucking doubt. Can he explain to you how a blockchain actually works? Probably not. So maybe not. I mean, Mark Cuban's kind of on the same boat, but he's just like, he's just a cool ass dude. So I let that one slide. But I want Sam Bankman Freed, um, the founder of FTX. That's kind of like, FTX is basically the Amazon of the crypto world right now. They are eating up all the small fish during this bear market. They bought out so many companies for like pennies on the dollar. They bought out companies that were valued at 40 billion. They bought them for like 3 billion, 2 billion, 500 mil, 800 mil. Let me see. I think they're set to buy out BlockFi. BlockFi being one of the biggest names. Voyager rejected the FTX buyout. That actually doesn't make any fucking sense. Voyager needs to rethink their life. Eighty-eight interested parties have contacted the cryptocurrency lender. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, that's fucking crazy. But yeah, FTX going through and buying all the weak fish. That I think is the biggest piece of, uh, you know, uh, like the biggest tell that they're going to be the big player. I'm protecting on both NAS and U30 up 1500. Let's go. Yep. I would uh, book some and then just let this thing ride up. Like the breakout trade is cool, but at the end of the day, we still had a massive rejection off of this liquidity zone. We're still creating lower highs. We still have some weak volume. I'd pull some. By the time we get up here, I think we're going to wick back through and start to make our way back down. Who was your mentor? Uh, ICT Michael. Guys, look, there's two people. There's two people y'all ain't mentioning in these comments. Or uh, yeah, ICT, don't mention them. And then Andrew Tate. Don't do that. The ICT guy is cool. There's a lot of valuable information there if you guys go check out the YouTube. But let me be, let me be completely honest about something. Analyzing markets and trading and putting money on the line through a live broker are very different games. Analyzing markets and then being very strategic and then being very predictive and then having these sorts of assumptions about what institutions are thinking and that you know what institutions are thinking and all this stuff is a very dangerous game for a trader. The right way to trade, 
the healthiest way to trade is to find a strategy that yields you a high percentage and then to accept the probabilistic nature. When you enter a trade, you're like, well, there goes the money. There goes the money. I accept the fact that I could lose this money and I'm going to take the chance on this thing playing out. The model over there that this guy's like market makers kidnapped this dude and showed him the way or some shit like that. Oh, who the fuck is believing this stuff? You know what I'm saying? It's so the easiest thing that you can do is learn how to find support and resistance is to learn how to identify, you know, shifts in momentum, right? So it's consolidating. It's weak as fuck. It's weak as fuck. It's getting higher. It's getting higher double top where it should reject. Instead, it fucking pumps up to the liquidity zone. You know, it's a previous liquidity zone. You can sell it off. Price continues to create higher lows at this area, wicks through and then closes back above. So like you can learn a strategy. You can learn how momentum works. You can learn how direction works. You can learn how impulse and retracements work. You can learn about flags. You can learn about patterns and it'll make your life pretty easy. Learning institutional market theory puts you in a state where you begin to assume you understand how institutions think. And I'll tell you guys right now, I actually know people that work at some family offices and some hedge funds that are managing billions of dollars. And they're a floor trader there. People, they run on data. We all run on data. If the market drops out of the sky 20%, they have to react the same way that we have to react. The only people that can move markets are market makers and the largest central banks in the world. That's who sets interest rate policy so they can move the markets. And that's who's driving liquidity and pumping money into these plays. So, and assuming you know what someone is thinking halfway across the world, when they can click one button and fuck up your whole trade is a little bit naive, All right? It sounds really good when you're like, I cracked the code, market makers kidnapped me, the aliens, they probed me, you know, they stuck stuff inside of me. I know how things work now. It sounds good on YouTube. You have said it all. That's what the ICT guy does. The people talk a bunch of SMC and all that rubbish. Yeah, bruv, come on. Who was my first mentor? Um, first off, NASDAQ, TP hit. Everything, everything outside of this is basically extra credit. I didn't take this trade, right? Just like I said. Um, but bulls, I feel like have the, have the advantage here because the majority of retail is selling today off of the negative GDP news. So it'd make a lot of sense to have just like a fucking, just a very aggressive, violent spike up for, for any short sellers kind of getting smacked. Yeah, I'm going to age. I'm going to age like three extra years swing trading GJ, but I'm committed. I'm committed to holding this thing through thick and thin. Uh, we don't marry trades. If I break below my key structural levels, I'll close it. However, I'm going to be in this thing until it pops. Uh, shout out to Omer, my business partner, incredible trader. We've been trading together since day one. If you guys ask me who was my mentor, I don't really have a, a mentor as much as I have an accountability partner. Me and Omer are basically just in there. We would be skipping classes back in college, going, you know, hitting the library or whatever, um, you know, smoking weed fucking blowing accounts on us 30 right and so the reason that like guys, there's two kinds of people that start a course well there's three kinds of people that start a course it's like someone that went through the trenches made all the mistakes had to analyze themselves truthfully and look in the mirror and that's what allowed them to become successful by just through sheer honesty and just through sheer um accountability so Omer was basically my accountability partner. Uh, I would call him up. I'd be like, bro, I blew my account, whatever. And he would be like, yo, why the fuck did you, why did you risk your whole account on the trade? And I'm like, well, damn, that's a very valid question. I really don't know how to answer that. And that accountability made me realize that those sorts of mistakes that I kept coming to him with, I'd be like, yo, uh, I lost X amount today. How did you do? Whatever. Okay. What was the reason you lost? And then it started to be like repetitive. The reasons why I was losing. So then you start to become more conscious of those mistakes and you start to adjust those mistakes. This is why we do personal coaching at Char Addicts. It's literally because this is what worked for me and O. And uh, you know, it's going to work for everybody else because this shit is proven. Now it's hard because O having to tell me the truth and me having to accept the truth, that's a whole different ballgame, right? You have to be a special kind of person. You have to be a special kind of individual in their journey. 
you know, to really, to really accept that sort of information. But that's, I feel like the accountability partner was better than a mentor. Early people in my life, like after I had became successful, I wouldn't say successful, but like while I was still coming up, quote unquote, um, I had gotten introduced to a lot of people just because, you know, I'm, I was, I worked for Merrill Lynch. I was a private wealth manager. I was in a unique space at the time. Um, I got connected with Q. I got connected with Ted. I got connected with all the old people that I had met at uh, IML. I was in IML for a month. That's how I met O. And um, I met some of those individuals, but it really just became more of a personal thing. Like I would call, this is why I, I have so much respect for Lasaldo. Because I'd call Lasaldo or I'd call somebody and I'd be like, you know, uh, this is kind of what I'm going through. I just blew an account or I just retraced 50% in my account. We would talk about risk management. We would talk about psychology and all these other things. Um, I met Jason Stewart. I met, you know, James Storms. All of these incredible, incredible people, the people that I try to highlight on our YouTube, it's because I have so much respect for the value that they gave me when we were just having conversations. Because when you're having a, a conversation with another trader, whether anybody admits it or not, there is some learning going on, right? I'm going to learn from them. They might learn from me. And so um, I learned a lot about scaling accounts. I learned a lot about the psychology of trading, not letting other people affect your, your uh, mindset, right? I'm on the stream right now. There's probably a bunch of people on the stream like, Roy, nobody gives a fuck about the backstory. Let's, you know, where's the trade? And my whole thing is, is I'm not, in, I'm not taking any entries anymore. I already have this buy going on GJ and NASDAQ. I'm letting it chill. That buy position is already kind of done. Right. So I don't have to care about, you know, um, getting into a trade, for example, for any reason other than the fact that a trade is showing up. And so these are things that I would talk to people in the industry and talk to people that were trading and talking to people who had mentees and were trading, picking up some tips. So, yeah, that's basically it. Find an accountability partner. And obviously not everybody has access to the individuals I just named. I understand that. But that's why we started our YouTube channel. Like you can literally go on our YouTube and get mentorship from some of the best traders in the game. And I'm asking them questions. Like I'm asking them serious, serious questions. This is shit that nobody else wants to ask them because they kind of feel some kind of way. But you look at everybody from Emil, right? Emil is a crypto millionaire, guys. He, was, he turned a $10,000 investment to a million dollars 10 separate times. Now, the first couple of times you say, oh, he got lucky in the crypto markets. Okay. What about 10 fucking times? That's $10 million. It's a lot of fucking money, people. So you can learn a lot about how to take advantage of this crypto bear market from something, from a conversation like that. Um, same with Swaggy. Like the same conversation that me and Swaggy would have on a phone call. I was like, but we got to do this on a podcast. Same with Abel. This is another person that I respect in the industry. Uh, Michaela, she, she used to work for AstroFX and then she worked for Citigroup as, a, as an analyst and worked for Huobi Global. Alex Santi, right? He has got a trucking company, multiple, multiple businesses, Amazon stores, great trader, all the above. Q and Anthony, right? And, uh, Andy, Jessica Lane, uh, Derek. I respect Derek a lot, by the way, right? He's not a very a big name in the industry, but I have a lot of respect for him. He's got a free course on YouTube, does a lot for the community. James Storms and Jason. So you can go in here, Mamba, you know, all this other, Charlene, all this stuff. You can go in here and get, real insight from these people the same way that I would on a phone call. So if we're on the subject of mentorship, find an, you know, find an accountability partner. If you don't have one, Chart Addicts will provide you one. That's what our coaches do. It's a qualified accountability partner and someone to help you actually refine your strategies and your systems. But then also you guys can go to all the free resources online and just get mentored by some of the greatest, you know, some of the greatest names today and get that access. He said markets don't move themselves. They might. Did anybody on YouTube take NASDAQ or did anybody in the uh, group chat take NASDAQ? D Hawk said 3,500 slapper on NAS done for the day. Yes, sir. Oh, D Hawk. What's up, bro? Good to see you in here. Um, Nick, he said, I closed half on NASDAQ, letting it ride. So here's the reason why we close. Now, even though this thing is already made like a giant liquidity grab to the downside and pushed up, and you guys can see the body of the candle closed above support. 
this is a sign that buyers have all the momentum. But to, the reason that we take partial profits is if you measure this thing, this is at the 78% FIB. So at some point between the 70 and 80%, it's going to make a retracement back down before it continues. So this is the area where you'd want to take the partial profits. And then even when it pushed up and it broke to this level, the 61, this is, when I, this is where I said take partials. And then take partials at the 78 as well. Because if the market's going to make a retest, just like it's doing now, it'll do it from this level. And if it's going to reject and reverse, it'll do it from that level. So you can basically like assume that you're going to get the high of the market and you're going to close the tops of the market by closing at that retracement level. All right. Not saying it's not going to keep going up. It has a very good chance to keep going up. That's my personal opinion. Um, but that's that's the overall trade. A nice three to one r and slapper straight to the point. I took U30. I entered at uh, 962. For shorts or for what? Guys, look at this fucking entry, man. Oh, stop fucking playing with me, bro. All right. All right. Whatever, 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 whatever. Althea, did you take the shorts? I took longs. I took longs. Oh, oh you said all the way down here, right? 962? Yes. Yeah, 32962. Yes. Ooh. Now that's a great entry. A little bit higher risk on the wick. Yes, really, it is. <laughs> looks like <laughs> it depends on the take profit to see if the, the trade makes sense. Um, yeah. that's the low. I don't know. The risk is pretty high here. Even if you took it up to the previous top. That, that would be one way the trade would make sense is to take it to the previous highs, but we'll do yes. the same thing. We measure it with a fib top to bottom. The 78% fib is right here. So pretty good risk here. You could even put your stop loss just below this uh, 32,900. Yeah, that's where my, yeah, that's where my stop loss is. Perfect. So that's a nice 300 or sorry, three to one risk and reward. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I literally just took the 78 entry. I'm closing right now. I had set the sub limit earlier. I'm closing this thing. The only trade I really want to be in is GJ right now. I'm actually going to take this out of the way just to not confuse people. All right. We can see there's like smaller time frame. I'll tell you, you see this like little inverted head and shoulders here. So it could play around, but as long as it stays above the 32,000 level, this thing has a whole nother leg up. Yes, so that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. So if you're patient enough in this consolidation here, uh, as long as it doesn't close below like the 38 or any of these, as long as it keeps playing in the zone, then you're going to catch the next leg. It would be nice. All right, y'all. That's the market. Any questions, comments, concerns on the YouTube? If you guys are watching this, please throw a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. Um, greatly appreciated. Great to see all of you guys here today. Again, my name is Roy Dunia, co-founder, CEO of Chart Addicts, number one education service in the world for traders. If you guys are interested in getting education or coaching, head on over to chartaddictsfx.com. We'd be happy to work with you. Again, this stream is sponsored by Enigma FX. <laughs> Enigma FX, the number one Forex signals app in the world. Start your 30-day free trial at enigmafx.app. 30-day free trial, enigmafx.app, the number one Forex Signals app in the world. If there's any questions, put them in the YouTube chats. And let me see what you guys are cooking up. Spandan Giri says, been following Chart Addicts after they came as a guest on Wix Don't Lie channel. And I knew that, I knew that day these guys were very knowledgeable. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember that day. One of Raja's friends was trying to beef with me about the dollar or some shit like that, which, by the way, fucking to that dude, if he ever sees this stream, what? What, baby? What's up? 
I said the stream was like in fucking in 2021. Basically, I told him that the dollar was going to continue pumping up. And he didn't believe me because they were printing dollars. He was just talking about the dollar going bearish. And I told him that in the long term, like in the short term, we were going bearish. But in the long term, we were going to go bullish because everybody in the world was going to need dollars. If you keep printing more yen, you're going to have to have more dollars in your bank. To, okay, I'm not even going to go into it. So I beefed with some dude over the dollar on Raja's stream. And now we got some folks uh, that, that are on this stream. That's great to hear. He said, uh, just dumped oil, getting ready to give the stocks a little bit of a pump. Now, I, I think oil still has a lot of upside. Uh, OPEC is announcing some sort of uh, supply cuts. So whenever you take supply out of the market, price is going to go up just the way it is. Demand for oil has gone crazy. People are back doing road trips and everything else. And so they're going to try and bring demand back down a little bit. A little bit. Excuse me. Will GJ break my heart? We'll find out. We'll find out. All right, everybody. Great to see you guys on YouTube. I'll see you guys on Monday for the next stream. Keep an eye out. I have a very, very, very interesting podcast for you guys this Sunday. As you guys know, we've been launching a Sunday consistent, or we've been launching a podcast every Sunday consistently. I want to make sure that you guys catch this next one. Uh, the next one that we have, I believe, is oh wait, so where the hell is the other video? We just launched Yacht Talks. This has been one of my favorite podcasts. Literally, it was me, James, and Tyler, uh, James Storms, and Tyler McKechnie. We were on Tyler's yacht, basically just outside, talking about EAs, talking about automated trading, talking about prop firms, and all this other stuff. So go ahead and check out that one. So you guys can see we had the Swaggy interview. Then we had Emil, if you guys haven't checked out those two. Then we have the Yacht Talks podcast. And the next one is going to be with a very special guest, Umar Ashraf. He's a stock trader, but he's been trading for years. He's a millionaire. Uh, a lot of ups and downs in his trading provided a lot of sauce. So make sure you guys subscribe and check that out. Take it easy, YouTube. Peace. Boom. That stream